Okay, um, we're now going to try to uh, do the get data module. And in there, we have the statement already. We'll just move it up to right there. And then we'll come over and say end module. That's the only thing it needs to do. And we've separated the input statement from the other statements in our code, which is good because it's not cohesive. It's getting information from the screen in this case. So separating it out like this into its own module will mean that uh, the rest of the code has, is eligible to be cohesive or its possibility increases to be cohesive. So here we go. We'll go in here and say find car price module. Okay, and essentially the rest of this code could be there for the moment. Um, we're going to take some of it out into the uh, module that does the show results module, but we want to try to write some code that's uh, at least more cohesive than what it is right now, and any statement in this code that outputs to the screen would uh, be a problem because it would cause the cohesiveness of the module's code to be diminished. So, and right here in the very beginning, we say if sunroof equal y and uh, convertible equal y, then we're going to output uh, convertible's message. So this is going to the screen, and we have a problem right here. So we need a way to fix this. Uh, there's a number of ways we could do it. We could change and say if sunroof not equal to y, and not convertible equal to y. And uh, then we would eliminate this output statement and we'd have the, and then we instead of this else, we'd just have this code. That is a viable alternative. The only problem with it is that it uses the not operator, which is something we tend to want to stay away from in programming because it tends to make things harder to understand. Um, so if you wanted to stay away from that, we could set a flag variable. Uh, let's see, we could call it message code. Um, and we'll say that's equal to 1. Okay, so now we've sort of turned that message code field on to being 1. And if we're going to do that, we should set message code equal to zero up here so that it's off when we start and then it only gets turned on uh, when we have this uh, true that sunroof is y and convertible is y. The reason we're doing this is so that later we can test for message code equal one not have to test for this compound and output the message. So the output of the message doesn't need to be here anymore. I'm going to cut it from here and for the time being I'm just going to place it down here because I know I'll need it later. still need to do that. It's just that I'm not going to do it right there. This increases the cohesiveness of the code just a little bit because this message code equal 1 being here is just a tiny bit better than having the output of the, of the actual message. Not a whole lot better. Then, I don't know how this else slipped over, so we're going to move it back. Then we're going to do the test for car model and uh, and so forth to get the base price. But if we were to uh, execute a module called find uh, base price and put this if statement, this case structure if statement in there, we would increase the cohesiveness of the code that finds the base price, the cohesiveness of the case structure because remember that cohesiveness is increased whenever you have a smaller subtask in a module by itself. So if that's the case, we'll go ahead and take this code and cut it out of here. Come down, uh, find base price. module 
and paste it in. Now Word has gone ahead and changed the indentation, so I'm going to set it back the way it should be. You want to be careful that that doesn't happen to you when you amend the code in Word. And we're going to say end module, and we're done with that one. And we've just taken a piece of code out of here and put in in its place um, a module, invoking a module that will do that code. So it's really not changing the sequence of execution or anything. It's just modularizing the code. And the next thing we have is a series of one-tailed simple ifs. You could take this code and put it each piece, each one-tailed simple if, into a separate module. Uh, and that would certainly increase the cohesiveness of that code. In the interest of time, since I don't want to do that, I'm going to put it all in one module. Find extra price. Okay, and we'll come down here. Find extra price module and what we want to do is take the case series of one-tailed simples which includes the convertible best the convertible is a little different it's got all this stuff in it down to there and we'll cut it and paste it in here I'm not sure about the convertible test code yet because it does do this output for instance but we're going to separate it here first and then take a look at it. Going back up to that module we were working on we now have those two in there. Um, we could also close this up a bit. We could take this line of code it's only one line of code uh, but we could take it and put it in its own module. Calc um, total well, let's make it calc car price. Make sure we get it the same name. We'll come down here. We forgot to end this one, so we'll come in and end it. And then we will paste in the module name that we had up above. Don't need to have it be all uppercase, so we'll change some of it. Module. Did that so that I would be sure that the name was the same. Uh, it's important to have the module names the same here in the pseudocode. And, the, of course, it has to be the same in the VBA code. Okay, so that would be for this one statement. We'll take that statement and cut it out of there. And put it down here. And then in module, that's the only statement in that module. Okay, now we come back up. What do we have left? We've gotten rid of a lot of the code. This end if has moved over. Word has moved it over for us, so we're going to line it up again with the if that it belongs to. And then we've got this output statement. The output statement, for sure, we want to get it out of here. And we'll cut it and move it down, down to the bottom, temporarily storing it here. It's not in a module yet, but it will be when we get to do that. Remember, that's in the show results module. So we could do that now, sort of get it started. And these two statements are going to be in there. Not necessarily are they going to be like that, but uh, they're going to be in this module. So we'll just kind of start it here. Okay. Now let's see. We still have this uh, find extra price that we created. 
uh, Word also went ahead and changed the indentation here, so I'm going to have to come in. There's no reason for this indentation to happen. Uh, you only indent for uh, dependency of execution reasons in code, so uh, these if statements are not dependent on one another. Uh, the only thing that's dependent in this code is the uh, statements that are executed as a result of the true test or false test of the conditional on the alternation statement. So those are indented. These statements are indented. But not the end ifs and not the ifs. Okay, and this last end if needs to come out here. Or, excuse me, it goes right there, and this one comes out there. Okay, um, this module is, is pretty good, but it's not very cohesive. The one thing about it that's a problem is that we've got this output statement to the screen. So when we do this test, um, we want to figure out how we're going to deal with this message that comes out about the special package. We've already set the extra price to $37.99.96. We definitely want to do that in there, but this output statement has got to be moved. And we're going to cut it for the time being. Move this back since, again, it's been changed by word. We come down here, and that message uh, for the special package is going to come out down here, and I think it's going to come out in between these two, so right in here somewhere. And the only problem is that it's only supposed to come out if they've chosen all four of those, so I know it's not going to be like this when I'm done. But the messages are there. Just I have to figure out how I'm going to write the rest of the code. And as a result of moving it down there, all of this code now is much more cohesive than it was before. In fact, it wouldn't be a bad idea to go through here. This is non-cohesive. We know that. And this module, therefore, is being sacrificed, if you will, so the rest of the code will be more cohesive. This code looks pretty cohesive, except for the message code equal 1, and we're going to live with that. Um, this code is a sub-procedure which is a small task, and it doesn't have any input or output to the screen, so this is quite cohesive code find extra price now that we've moved that output message out is pretty cohesive at this point. So we're pretty happy about that one. Uh, calculate car price is only one statement. It's very cohesive. And then show results is the only other module and we're sacrificing that one so that the other code can be cohesive. Other modules. Okay, so we need to figure out how to write this module down here. It's the last one we have to finish. And we already know that we have a message code variable that if it's equal to 1, we want to output this message. Now we're going to stop and think about what we want to do next. Um, if you recall, if it's a convertible and a sunroof, uh, it's, an, it's a problem, it's an error, if you will. And we definitely don't want to output uh, the next output, which is receiving a special package, even if they've chosen the special pa package elements of sunroof, leather seats, custom speakers, and built-in retractable child seat. We would not want to give them the savings of $400 when they've already made an error of choosing convertible and sunroof. So uh, this could be in an else of this first if. And this last output, we would only want to output that if they had not chosen convertible and a sunroof also. So both of these could be in an else of this message code test for 1. We don't have to test for 0 because um, if it's not 1, it should be the case, the way we've written the code, that it, it's not a convertible and sunroof, therefore we don't... Uh, we don't have a problem just saying else. Anything else should be calculating the total price. I just noticed this is not a case. Okay, so the next thing we want to do then is, since it is an exclusive situation, we might want to test to see uh, if this output, the special package price, is uh, going to come out. And that's a test that was the same one as up here, where we did a test 
on sunroof equal y, leather seats equal y, and customer speakers equal y, and child seat equal y. This same test will copy that down here and paste it. So now it says else if sunroof equal y, leather seats equal y, customer speakers equal y, and retractable child seat equal y. And if all of those are true, we then would want to output the special packages message. Uh, it is also true that if we output the special packages message that we also want to output the car model and total price. And you might think that we're done, but uh, we have one problem. What if the customer uh, doesn't choose convertible and sunroof and they don't choose all of the options that are necessary for a special package price? But uh, they have chosen a car, and they have chosen maybe some extras, and so we need to put out a car model and a total price, but this code as written is not going to do that. It's only going to put out the car model and the car price if um, the pa special package is chosen. So what we need to do is here say else, and we need to end in it correctly. It should be over here lining up with the if that it belongs to and an else whenever you write it is going to be on a line by itself that's a, that's a class standard else uh, would be the case that we'd want to output just not the package price but the car model and the total price so we're going to copy that output statement down here and we're going to say and if and now it should work it should be able to put out the car model and the total price and only put the special package price out when it's applicable and it should output the convertibles do not come with sunroofs at the right time okay now the one thing about it is we've repeated code here we've got an output car model total car price and output car model total car price but if we had repeated that in the other third option of this case structure we would have then been obligated to bring it out of the case structure and write it one time. Whenever you repeat code within alternation, in every option of the alternation, it is best if you bring it out and not repeat it. Just write it once if you can. Sometimes it's not something that's doable. Okay, so we've got all of our output down here in this module, and we're essentially done with the pseudocode.